good everybody welcome to our epic my damn toys video today we have your wwe SummerSlam 2019 full show predictions and preview for you guys we're going to run through the entire card breaking down each matchup telling you my own personal thoughts on each matchup what i think about the feud what i think about everything leading up to this point and everything in the <laughs> literally almost just died just choked on nothing just then Anyways, now that I'm not choking to death, let's get back into the swing of things. All right, so SummerSlam 2019, guys, we got some rematches on this card. We got some fresh matches on this card. We had some weird matches on this card, to be honest with you. We got some legends coming out of retirement, coming back to face some current talent. We got some long-standing rivalries taking place in here. We got some solid little matchups, but uh, there are some things about this card that I'm not too excited about, and there's some things that I'm just baffled by and just totally confused by, which we will cover here in my predictions video, guys. But with that being said, let's go ahead and break it down and dive straight into this SummerSlam 2019 prediction video. So before we dive into the matches, guys, I do want to just plug something in right quick, and let's just talk about all of the championship matches that are not included in this card. You know, as of recording, as of posting this video, there are only 10 matches announced for this show. No tag team wrestling. There are zero tag team championship matches or any tag team matches on this entire card. The Intercontinental Championship and also the women's tag titles all left off of this card, which I think is absolutely absurd. There's a few ways you can look at it, though. A lot of people, you know, complain about there not being storylines. You know, there's no storylines for the tag titles, but I don't think that that's an excuse because that's also WWE's fault. So, you know, you have so many writers, you have so many, you know, people in the back writing for this show, and you can't even create storylines for your tag team championships. Like, none of them. There's not a single tag team championship match on this entire card. I'm pretty sure every match on this card is one-on-one. -on -one. There's not a single multi-man match. There's no tag team matches. And, you know, it's just really frustrating for Shinsuke Nakamura to be left off and the New Day and the club and the newly crowned women's championships you know I, I, I do think however that before uh, this show takes place on Sunday I do think that one or two of these will be placed on the pre-show you know with just like a quick matchup you know that happened to Shinsuke and Finn Balor remember when Shinsuke took the IC title off of Finn Balor at the last show so I mean anything is possible here but uh, I just wanted to plug this in how I thought that was absolutely crazy I thought that they would add more matchups but even today they still haven't added them and so uh, expect some of these matches to take place but I did want to plug it in here and just take notice of how many titles are left off and there not being a single tag team championship match. Also to point out the fact the big dog is also left off of SummerSlam. All right, is Vince McMahon okay? Is he like taking prescription drugs, Medicaid? Like what the hell is happening? The big dog is left off of SummerSlam? What the hell is happening? Starting it off with our first matchup, guys, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match between Drew Gulak taking on Oni Lorcan in the pre-show. So this is going to be a pretty good one, guys. I think that this is going to be one of the most underrated matches on the card. I don't think that Oni Lorcan is going to get it done here, but I am a fan of Oni Lorcan. Also, uh, if you guys don't follow him on Twitter, definitely go follow him on Twitter. He's a, he's a pretty good guy to follow on Twitter. But anyways, Drew Gulak taking on to, uh, Oni Lorcan here in this matchup. I think it should be a solid one, but I do think that it'd be a bit early and premature to take the title off of Drew. Gulak. I really enjoyed Drew Gulak's work in the ring. You know, he's a good promo as well. So I think that it's too early to take it off of Gulak. So I'm going to go with Gulak to retain his Cruiserweight Championship. Next up, guys, we have my boy Kevin Owens taking on Shane McMahon in a singles match. And if Kevin Owens does lose this matchup, he will be forced to quit WWE. Very interesting stipulation going on right here. And I have mixed feelings about this. I'm really excited for the match. I think both of these men are going to beat the hell out of each other. Shane McMahon in these types of situations is really, really good, and he's very entertaining to watch. I mean, you could look at The Miz and Kurt Angle and his matches in the past where he's just beating the hell out of each other. And um, I think that uh, I wish this had a stipulation added to it. You know, maybe they'll get some weapons involved and some crazy spots involved, but you know what? Well, I, I think that this is going to be very nice. Anyways, getting into what I'm thinking here, guys, I have really loved the promo work by Kevin Owens coming in here. Shane McMahon's played a fantastic heel over the you know, past few months. People have just hated this man for good reason. I have also hated him. And just the promos that Kevin Owens has cut has just been incredible stuff. Incredible TV, man. The, the man is just one of the best talents in the world. When I say it, I mean it. And so uh, this matchup has very good implications in front of it. And I, I have mixed feelings in this portion of it where if Kevin Owens loses, he's forced to quit WWE. And so uh, I don't think that they would have him written off television when he literally just got back from injury. You know, it wasn't too long ago that he got back 
from injury, so I don't see them writing him off again after just returning not too long ago. So I think that is that is what's going to keep me on the fence of Kevin Owens. However, I think that you know we could see some interference from other members to help Shane McMahon. That could also be a possibility here. But I think that Kevin Owens is going to get the job done here, and I think he should. You know, getting rid of Shane McMahon, he's going to be very over after that. You know, Kevin Owens is going to be praised for getting rid of you know the best in the world, Shane McMahon, and ridding us of him. So I think that's where they're going with it. So I'm going to go with Kevin Owens tier to pin Shane McMahon and get him off our televisions. Next up, guys, we have a fantasy matchup of sorts. I know a lot of people are looking forward to this matchup. It's a fantasy matchup for a ton of people coming in. We have Trish Stratus taking on Charlotte Flair. And so uh, I think this one is going to deliver. I think these women are going to put on a good showing. I think that, you know, Trish and Charlotte, they usually never disappoint. So I think that they're definitely going to do well. You know, Trish has always looked good in her matches, you know, uh, ever since, you know, fully getting away from being a full-time performer in WWE. So I think that she is going to deliver. I think Charlotte will also deliver. And so it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think that their styles will clash very well here in this ring at SummerSlam. However, I do not really care about the matchup. You know, I'm not going into it looking forward to it at all. I'm just not invested into it at all, even though, you know, I think that the match will deliver. Just going in, just straight up, based off of just a one-on-one -on -one matchup, I think it'll be good. But however, just storyline and stuff of that nature, I'm just not bought into it. So uh, I, I think I'm going to go with Charlotte winning here. I think it's, you know, fairly obvious, you know, uh, Trish Stratus, the legend, putting over the up-and-coming Charlotte. I say up-and-coming, but she's like an 80 times champion. So, you know, she's going to put over the younger talent in Charlotte and sort of hand over the torch, if you will, if the torch hasn't already been passed, you know. But anyway, Charlotte Flair will defeat Trish Stratus. Next up, guys, we have the male version of this sort of fantasy matchup, if you will. If anybody's fantasizing about this matchup, I don't know what kind of drugs you're on. But anyways, we have Goldberg taking on my man Dolph Ziggler right here. And I really, you know, guys, I mean, this is just, uh, you guys know how I feel about this. We have Dolph Ziggler, you know, one of my favorite wrestlers, and I just see him, you know, getting getting destroyed in this matchup. He's going to be disposed of in like three or four seconds. It's going to be a very sad situation for Dolph Ziggler in this matchup. I just don't see it being competitive at all. I think it would be really fun to see them, you know, have a competitive competitive matchup, going back and forth, telling a good story, and ultimately having Ziggler defeat Goldberg. I think that would be epic, you know, thrust Ziggler over the top, but I, I just don't see it happening, guys. You know, Goldberg really wants to make up for his terrible matchup at Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia, so I think that uh, he's going to get disposed of, and I think it's going to be a spear, a spear, a jackhammer, one, two, three, and it's over. However, I'd love to see a competitive matchup, just don't see it happening here. I'm going with Goldberg, even though I'm going to be, you know, just supportive of Ziggler. Maybe they'll shock me. I highly doubt it, though. But one thing I wanted to add real quick, I know I've covered it before, but I wanted to add it real quick for those of you who haven't heard it. Um, you guys know that uh, Goldberg once buried Kevin Owens, right? He buried him, won the Universal Championship. Well, last show or last pay-per-view, didn't Kevin Owens bury Dolph Ziggler in like four seconds with one stunner? So why in the hell would we believe that Goldberg won't absolutely mop the floor with Ziggler? It's just something to think of from a logical standpoint. But anyways, we had The Miz and Shawn Michaels mixed up in this thing. Then out of nowhere, here comes Goldberg. I guess the rumors were true. We're getting this matchup, and I think Ziggler will get crushed. I'm going with Goldberg. Next up, guys, we have my boy Finn Balor taking on The Fiend in his debut. Bray Wyatt returning with that new gimmick. Everybody's super hyped for it. I'm super hyped for it. However, what I'm not hyped for is my boy Finn Balor getting absolutely crushed here. So not only does my boy Ziggler get crushed, but my boy Finn Balor going to get crushed in this matchup. I don't think this is going to be very competitive, guys. I, I really think that Finn Balor will be buried in this matchup. It'll be a very quick one. It'll be one of those bathroom break matches between main event matches, you know, between the championship matches. This match will take place, I'm sure. Bray Wyatt will destroy Finn Balor, and I think the rumors are that he's supposed to be written off television, so Finn Balor will be written off television, and then uh, he'll return later on, apparently supposedly turning heel, joining the club or something. That's what the rumor mill says, but who knows about that, you know, uh, but I do think he is going to be taking time off. He's going to get buried by Bray, and then uh, on his way, take a little time off, recuperate, get ready, and come back, and so that that's very disappointing. It does suck. I would have loved to seen the Demon versus the Fiend. However, I'm glad that that we're not getting the demon because that would mean that it would be losing here to the fiend and while everybody's hyped up on the fiend i'm hyped up on the demon i love the demon gimmick and i think that it should be protected i think it's smart to keep the demon and the fiend separated maybe come back to this matchup at wrestlemania that would be pretty cool have the demon versus the fiend now that's where your money is having finn balor get his redemption as the demon and finally defeating the fiend at wrestlemania that's how you book it and so hopefully that is what takes place here but i do think that the Fiend Bray Wyatt will win here over the man Finn Balor, and that is what I'm going with. 
Next up, guys, we have our first women's championship match of the night. We have Ember Moon taking on Bayley for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. These are two of my favorite women in all of WWE, two super talented in-ring performers between the two women going on. I'm super excited for this one. I, I think these women are going to tear the house down. I think this will be the best women's match of the night, one that I'm very much looking forward to. Hopefully, they give them time, they let them go, and they let them have a good matchup. And to be honest with you, I would love to see Ember Moon capture the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. While I love the way they're booking Bailey right now as far as a champion is concerned. I want her to keep winning, keep up that winning streak after having a terrible last year. So then again, I, I, I think I want Bailey to win here, though I love Ember Moon. Then again, on the other side, you have Ember Moon who has been treated like trash since coming to the main roster. So, I mean, you have some give and take. You have both of them having pretty good redemption stories, but I think for now, the best thing for Bailey is to win here. I think I'm going to go with Bailey to retain the SmackDown Live Women's Championship in a really good matchup, one of the matches that I'm looking forward to on this card the most. And so I'm going to go with Bailey to defeat Ember Moon in a really good matchup. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have two of the best in-ring performers in the world, in my opinion. We have Ricochet taking on AJ Styles for the United States Championship. And this feud's very confusing, you know. I feel like we've seen these guys wrestle three or four times already coming into this matchup. And so, you know, Ricochet won the U.S. title from Samoa Joe in an upset victory. And then, you know, I thought that he was going to beat AJ Styles. That turned out to not happen. You know, the club reformed. AJ Styles recaptured the United States Championship for the second or third time. I think it's his third championship in his career now with the U.S. title. So uh, the club is reformed, joined forces with AJ, which I really do enjoy, but I just did not see them doing this to Ricochet. Having him drop the U.S. title just to win it back wouldn't make sense to me, and I think that the club needs to really establish some dominance here as this heel stable, and uh, with all of them holding gold, I think they're going to continue that. I think that, you know, AJ Styles will retain here, but I hope that it's even better than their previous matchups. You know, SummerSlam is the time to break out all of the tricks, all the flips, all the reversals, all the good in-ring chemistry that we want to see. So I think this is a really important match for these two. I think this is a really important match for these guys in this SummerSlam matchup here for the U.S. Championship. And I'm going to go with AJ Styles to retain, and hopefully it's better than the rest of their matchups. Not to say their, their other matches were bad, because they were absolutely brilliant. But I want them to take it another level here in this matchup, considering it is SummerSlam, and this will be their third or fourth meeting for the U.S. title. So I'm going to go with AJ Styles and the club to retain that U.S. Championship. Next up, guys, we have a submission match for the Raw Women's Championship between one of my favorite women in all of WWE, Becky Lynch, defending her title against Natalya here in a submission match. Should be pretty interesting. I've actually had a lot of people tell me that they think there's going to be a Montreal screwjob finish to this matchup, which would be absolutely terrible considering they've done that two or three times since the Montreal screwjob. They may have even done it more times than that, but uh, hopefully they don't pull that. I, I really don't think they should, but um, I think Becky will retain here. I think she should retain here. She's going to make... Natalia tap out to the disarm her, and I think it should be a decent little matchup. You know, nothing too crazy, nothing too immaculate, but I think it'll be overall a solid one between Becky and Natalia. But I am going to go with Becky. I didn't think that Natalia was the best matchup for her here at SummerSlam. I also thought about maybe Ronda Rousey returns. I thought about maybe Ronda Rousey comes out. You know, SummerSlam's a big show, uh, so you know, big surprises usually happen at this show, or some big crazy things at the end of matches happen. So maybe Ronda Rousey returns and calls Becky Lynch the championship leading to Natalya winning that. I know Ronda is either about to give birth or she just recently gave birth. I don't know the status of her pregnancy, but I thought she was pregnant. I could be wrong about that altogether. However, if she uh, if she's good with that and she can return to help Natalya win, I could see that taking place because we haven't seen her since WrestleMania 35. But other than that, if that doesn't happen, I'm going to go with Becky Lynch to retain her championship. Next up, guys, we have one of the matchups that I'm most looking forward to. My boy Randy Orton going after the WWE Championship and Kofi Kingston here in a matchup that I'm very much looking forward to. I mean, the storyline between these two guys books itself. It's really good stuff. You have a super babyface in Kofi versus a super heel in Randy Orton, and I am looking forward to this one very much. Every matchup that Kofi Kingston has put on since becoming champion has been really good, really well booked. He's looked strong as a champion, so I think the best thing here is for Randy Orton, the Viper, to have finally overcome Kofi Kingston here and put him down, recapturing the WWE Championship, his 14th world title in his career in WWE, and I think that it should happen here at SummerSlam. I think this is the time to pull the trigger, and uh, it would be epic. You could force Randy Orton into a super heel role. You know, he was a babyface when he won it back, 
in 2017, and it wasn't a very good run because he was babyface, so maybe they should uh, switch it up here as a heel, have him recapture the championship, and book him the right way that they should have in 2017 as a heel, but he was a babyface. It was just not good stuff, so they should uh, have Randy Orton capture the WWE Championship in a really good matchup, telling a great story between the two. Find this man a good babyface going into the end of 2019. My first pick will be Kevin Owens after, you know, sending Shane McMahon away, and then you have Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton going into the end of 2019. But you never know. You know, it seems like they're really booking Kofi really strong in his championship run, so I think that anything is possible, and I would not be shocked if Kofi Kingston overcame Randy Orton here at SummerSlam, but I'm going to go with Randy Orton, my boy, going to capture that WWE title, and it's going to be good stuff. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Universal Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins. Brock Lesnar, of course, cashing in on Seth Rollins to recapture the Universal Championship. You know, a lot of people are very pissed off about this. I, for one, was pretty annoyed with it, but I knew it would inevitably happen because, you know, uh, he, he won the Money in the Bank briefcase. After he won the Money in the Bank, I was like, they're going to get this man the championship back. And sure enough, here he is. Maybe this was just a ploy to sell SummerSlam tickets. I don't know. But hopefully my boy Seth can get it done here. Seth Rollins also one of my favorite performers in WWE, one of my favorite wrestlers, so hopefully he can overcome the odds and become a two-time Universal Champion here versus the Beast and uh, be the Beast Slayer once again here at SummerSlam. Does it at WrestleMania? Does it again at SummerSlam? And if Brock is uh, indeed losing the championship, I could see this starting off the night. This could be the first matchup we see just like we did at WrestleMania, so I wouldn't be shocked at all if that took place, but I really want to see Seth win here, man. I really think that it's important here. Um, give him the title back, have him go on a better run than he did you know they had him feuding with Baron Corbin Trash Corbin of all people you know he, he had to beat him three or four times and that just doesn't make for a good championship run they had him with Becky Lynch doing this boyfriend girlfriend angle that nobody liked I mean my god man just book him strong like you did Kofi Kingston I know Kofi Kingston comes out and throws pancakes and everybody can't really take him seriously as a champion but I think that it, it, they can do the same with Seth but not make him look like such a jackass so I'm gonna go with Seth Rollins man I think he could win I wouldn't be shocked if you know there was some Trash Corbin interference. We haven't seen Trash Corbin since he lost that most recent matchup to Seth Rollins, right? He's been left off of TV. We may have seen him once or twice. However, I think that Trash Corbin's getting repackaged in some sort of deal. Maybe Paul Heyman has something to do with it. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with Seth Rollins to reclaim that Universal Championship and ending SummerSlam on a high note, and I don't know who the hell would be in line. You know, another thing, guys, Roman Reigns is left off this card, which baffles my mind. I know we were doing the mystery angle, and then it turned out that it was Rowan, uh, I suppose, or Daniel Bryan. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell they're planning or if they're going to continue that storyline after SummerSlam or what the deal is. But that is going to do it for my SummerSlam 2019 predictions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys missed our action figure setup of SummerSlam 2019 yesterday, definitely go check that on the channel. Tons of collection videos in the past week as well. Definitely go check those out. And uh, thank you guys so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Go Seth Rollins. And let's see if he can capture this Universal Championship on Sunday night. Thank you.